Welcome to Audio Sorcerers, Wizards and Gears, my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is a channel where I teach you how to fetch our recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So in today's video, we're continuing along with my Pro Tools series, and we're talking about the four different edit modes inside of Pro Tools. Now this video is probably going to be for beginners, two Pro Tools, or even new recording, so if you're advanced, you probably don't need to watch this video. But before we get to the video, I do want to remind you guys that I offer mixing and mastering services. If you go to audiosorcerer.com, you can check out my samples and my rates, and I give 10% off to new customers. And look who joined us here, Mr. Hobbs. <laughs> so uh, if you like this video and you like Hobbs here, give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, let's get this tutorial. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools, and today's video is gonna be kind of short as we're just talking about the four different edit modes that exist inside of Pro Tools. And they're located up here in the top left. You have shuffle, slip, spot, grid, and technically you have five, because if you press on grid here on the arrow, you'll see you have absolute grid and relative grid, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, you can simply click on any of these to enable them, or as we do on this channel, use keyboard shortcuts. So F1 through F4 will get you through these. F1 is shuffle, F2 is slip, F3 is spot, and F4 is grid. And if you hit F4 again, it'll go to relative grid, hit it again, it'll go to grid. It toggles back and forth. Now that you know what the four modes are and where they're located at, let's actually start with the first mode, which is going to be grid mode. All right, so if we're talking about grid mode here and the rest of the modes, we'll simply use this snare drum track um, to test them all out. And grid actually means exactly what it says. So behind all the audio here, you can see these blue lines, and this is the grid, essentially. And the darker blue lines here are the downbeats of each measure, and then the lines in between are the beats in between, essentially like one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, just like that. And uh, to see this, if you're not seeing it, you need to make sure that grid is enabled right here. It needs to be lit up in green. So if I turn it off, you see it goes away. Turn it on, now it's back. So now back to what grid mode actually is. If I click on a clip here and per se drag it to the left, you're gonna see that it snaps to the blue lines. It's basically staying on the grid the whole time. And you may ask, well, what's the best editing scenario for this type of editing? And I would say creating loops. So for example, if I was to copy this clip here, uh, I'll just paste it down on the track below. You could make sure that it's highlighted here and you gotta make sure that the beginning of it starts on a blue line and the end ends on a blue line. You can simply do Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac and you will create a loop there. In this situation, that would be, it looks like a two bar loop we just created. So if you had an actual full kit drum loop, like, you know, kick, snare, and everything in there, and you just wanted to loop it up, this is a great way to do it, and you would use grid mode for that. And while we're talking about grid mode, I do want to briefly go over relative grid. Um, it's something I never use, but that doesn't mean you won't find a use for it. So uh, let me actually take a clip here and put it in between the blue lines. We'll put about almost exactly in between. And then let's go to relative grid. And what's going to happen is, if we were on grid and I move this to the left, it would snap right onto the blue grid line. But what's going to happen for relative grid is it's going to snap in between these blue lines where it's located on these blue lines or in between these blue lines. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but let me drag it to the left so you can see. So I drag it to the left and you can see it's in between these two blue lines. Did it again and it's in between these two blue lines. So it's always going to stay relative to where it's at on the timeline when you move it. So it's almost like you kind of replaced your good lines when you're using it. I know it's kind of a weird concept. Again, it's not something I really use, but who knows, maybe we'll find use for it. So that is pretty much everything there is to grid mode. Let's move on to our next mode, which is slip mode. All right, so talking about slip mode, and slip mode basically means I can drag a clip or shorten or lengthen a clip anywhere on the timeline. I'm not restricted to the grid lines. So if I click on this clip here and I start dragging it, you're gonna see that it doesn't snap to anything. And then I can just drop it anywhere I want. And you may ask yourself, um, 
well, how is that useful in music or film? Well, film being the place where it's most useful because obviously when you are placing in sound effects for film, you need to drop them where the actual sound is happening, which in most cases is not on a grid line. So you're always gonna be using slip mode in film. Now for music, if I wanted to, I don't know, shorten the decay time on the snare, I can simply shorten the region by dragging it here and dropping it where I want. So I can stop it there. And then I can put my fade in here. And then I, you know, shorten the decay time. Now, grid works the same way. I didn't say that um, in the grid portion of this tutorial, but if I put grid on here, the thing that's gonna happen with shortening and lengthening clips is it's gonna snap to the grid, just as if I was moving it. You see it's snapping to the blue lines. So, but yeah, I mean, slip mode, uh, you're gonna use it. Um, you may even use it on the beginning of a clip here to do like a little fade in on it to you know bring it in smoothly. That's uh, another snare you've used it for, but um, yeah, not for loops, for fine tooth editing and also for film. So let's talk about our next editing mode, which is spot. All right, so talking about spot mode, this editing mode basically does what it says also. It allows you to place a clip anywhere on the timeline using things like beats and bars, minutes and seconds, time code. So if I was to click on a clip here, it's gonna launch the spot dialog window. And you can see under here I have beats and bars, minutes and seconds, time code, feet plus frames, samples. So I we went to beats and bars and I wanted to move this clip to, I don't know, this line right here. That would probably be 15, 3, 7, 50, somewhere around there. Let's see. And I'll hit OK. And you see how it shifted the clip here? So it's not quite on there, but it, it's close enough. And you can do the same thing with um, you know minutes and seconds. If I click on it here and I go to minutes and seconds, I can change the uh, minutes and seconds here and it will place that clip wherever I select it here. So you're probably saying, hey, what is spot mode used for in music? And really, I couldn't tell you because I never use it in music. Um, I could see how it could be useful in film, especially with the fact you have time code and such in there. So I think you're gonna mostly be using slip and grid mode of the modes we talked about so far but hey again you might find a way to use it so with that being said let's move on to our last mode which is shuffle mode all right so talking about shuffle mode shuffle mode is also a mode i don't use very often actually almost never but it's actually kind of cool so what it does is it allows you to delete a portion of a track or a bunch of tracks at one time and it's going to shift everything that was on the right of which you deleted to wherever your cursor's at. So if I go to grid mode first here, and this is the whole chorus, basically where this yellow region is at here. So if I highlight from there over to here, and I wanna do this on the grid lines where I'm doing now, this is essentially gonna be me removing the whole chorus and everything to the right of the chorus here is gonna move all the way over to where my deletion um, starting point is at. So if I go to shuffle here now and I hit delete on my keyboard, everything shifted on over like that. So it's kind of cool. So if you want to remove a, a selection in the song, like a bridge or a chorus and have whatever is after it attached to what's before it, shuffle is the editing mode you would use. So those are your four editing modes. Uh, I hope you like this video. I know it's kind of simplistic, but it, it's great for those beginner pro tools um, you know, users out there. And honestly, these modes exist in other DOS too. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys like what I'm doing, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to have new videos coming out. So with that being said, I will see you guys later and peace out.